Okay, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mr. Hall. I'm Mr. Teak's student teacher in the afternoon. Um, for those of you that have classes in the afternoon, you already know me, so um, now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to give you kind of your e-learning lesson today. Mr. Teague should have already told you what the plan is, what we're doing, and I'm just here to get the content out. So we're going to be talking about the Blitzkrieg. So on your timeline, you should find the section that has Blitzkrieg as your event. And as always, we'll start with a summary. So the what, the when, the where, the how of the Blitz, right? So what was it? So, Blitzkrieg, a.k.a. Lightning War, was the tactic of quickly and swiftly applying strong force to one area as opposed to spreading out troops. So, really quick and heavy uh, attacks against one area instead of spreading out attacks over a broad spectrum of land using a broad number of troops and areas. So, fast war. Think about it that way. Um, the Germans first used this in the Spanish Civil War in 1933, so you could start your summary there. You could start your time from 1933. But also, it was first used on a large scale in the invasion of Poland, which kind of kickstarts World War II in 1939. So maybe that's your start date, is 1939. So either one works for that. Then, in May 1940, came Germany's invasion of Belgium, the Netherlands, and France, during which the German army used the combined force of tanks, uh, mobile infantry, so ground troops, troops on the ground, and artillery troops. So uh, shoot, shooting artillery from a distance away is like big bombs. You probably have seen an artillery shell. If not, hopefully we'll show you some pictures when we get back to school. Um, and they drove through the forest and quickly penetrated the Allied defenses in France. Make sense? Hope so. So in your summary, have some combination of those two so far. But then also, down here at the bottom, uh, German forces attempted to use Blitzkrieg tactics uh, against the USSR, so the Soviet Union and Russia, but it actually doesn't work. The Germans don't find much success there, and they're actually stopped and stalemated. And so the German Blitz uh, ends by 1943. So from approximately, at least in the sense of World War II, 1939 here with the invasion of Poland, and then 1943 when it fails in Russia against the USSR. And that, that basically causes Germany to be uh, fighting a defensive war the rest of the war. So there's your summary. So that's your, your what, when, where. Feel free to add some stuff to that if you find some. So then move down to the bottom section. So that bottom section of the Blitz, you might break your box into two sections again with causes and effects as we've done before. So causes of the Blitz. Um, so the Germans kind of learned from World War I, right? They just got out of World War I. It was a bloody war. It was the worst war ever in terms of casualties and death at that point. Um, and it was an awful war. We talked about trench warfare. You did the trench warfare simulation. So think back to that. Um, German leaders didn't like that. It was not the way to go. And so they tried to avoid trench warfare by going to this blitz tactic where it was more mobile, maneuverable, and flexible, uh, rather than just sitting in one area, uh, holding out hope that one side breaks in these trenches. So they learned from World War I, they learned from their mistakes, so they, that's why they went with this Blitzkrieg tactic. What else? What else happens? So yeah, so the Germans decide to prepare for a shorter conflict, one through military maneuvers, rather than in the trenches, uh, lining up and, and digging yourself in, avoiding machine guns, stuff like that. Um, hiding behind your desk as you guys did. So they're preparing for a shorter conflict. They want it to be a short and quick war. They want to take over as quickly as possible with as little casualties as possible as well. And so they focus on mobile warfare. Um, it was also kind of in part to Germany's limited resources. We talked about the Treaty of Versailles, how uh, Germany was not allowed to have a big military. And then we talk about um, appeasement. We, that's our first thing on there, where uh, Great Britain and France are kind of like, okay, Hitler, you can rebuild your army, but it's still late in the game, right? This is still later on. So Germany's still recovering from this. And so they don't have a lot of military resources or manpower yet. Now it is exceeding that 100,000 mark. He, Hitler doubles it, triples it. Um, but at the start of this, the Treaty of Versailles really has an impact on 
on Hitler and Germany's army in general. Um, so they go with this blitz tactic, hoping to uh, basically take advantage of the resources they do have and not waste them over an expanded period. Crystal meth. Um... Huh, crystal meth. That's crazy. Actually, it was called Pervitid. Yes, folks, that's right. That guy, Adolf Hitler, responsible for genocide in the 20th century and Volkswagen, the automobile, and the Autobahn, and driving fast. He also was responsible for his soldiers taking methamphetamine in order to be able to march for three to four days at a time without sleep and to continue fighting and not being super depressed with all the killing and stuff. His soldiers were taking methamphetamine, which was legal in Germany, over the counter, I mind, mind you, until 1941. And so the Allies at the beginning of the war were just astonished by Germany's blitzkrieg assault in Poland and in France, Belgium, Holland as well, because they didn't understand what was going on. And so we have the luxury today to look back in history and say, those guys were high on crystal meth, and that's why they were fighting like super soldiers. And I will say this right now, because nowadays... We know this. Drugs are bad. They are. And uh, there was lots of side effects for German soldiers during this time period. And actually, the use of methamphetamine was drawn back considerably throughout the war and actually kind of explains the regression in the performance of the German army towards the end of the war. But also, then you have the mix-in of younger troops being used and older men that are conscripted into the German army towards the end. And so, but yeah, Blitzkrieg, it's not possible for human beings to go three to four days without sleep, fire machine guns, and march, and fire machine guns some more, and be fired at, and keep going without utterly collapsing, and in fact, many had their hearts explode inside their chest. So again, kids, let's end this lesson with, World War II was deadly, and drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. Continue on, Mr. Hall. Kind of wild. So let's move on. Let's move on here. What about the effects? What are the consequences of the Blitzkrieg? So on the other side of your box there, under the timeline, what are the causes, the effect, or what are the effects, I should say, the consequences of the Blitz? So because of the swift and powerful attacks, as we said, um, the Allied forces had to scramble to defend their borders and their citizens. Um, they, they were trying to just defend themselves at all, at all costs. Um, they, they had no aggression in this section of the war. Uh, Germany was pushing and pushing and pushing. And then it also leads to uh, Poland being retaken pretty quickly by Germany. And this really starts World War II. So maybe one of the consequences of the Blitz is really the start of the war. Obviously, the Blitz goes into a significant section of the war, but this is really where it starts. Polish territory was regained with the invasion of Poland using blitz tactics. So then they, they invade Poland, they win back Polish territory, and then subsequently, with this blitz tactic, Belgium, Netherlands, and France fall quickly to the pressures of German air and land forces, that total war, that complete uh, uh, push in one area by air forces and land forces, and it gave Hitler a major section of control in Western and Central Europe. So all that land that was taken from the Treaty of Versailles, mark that off, he's come straight back with appeasement, and then he's invaded Poland, he's taken back that land, and then now Belgium, Netherlands, and France are falling quickly to the pressure of the Blitz. And so that's a huge chunk of these Allied forces in this Allied land now that Germany has control of. And so ultimately the effect of the Blitz or the Lightning War is that it puts a quick advantage towards the Germans as war breaks out. So as this war is just getting started, as we can see here with the invasion of Poland, uh, this Blitzkrieg gives Hitler and the German forces a huge advantage in Europe. Uh, and, and it basically leaves Great Britain frantically trying to strengthen his defense against German invasion, sc really scrambling, literally scrambling military forces uh, to, to try and figure out something to stop this German attack. And then one last thing here, Hitler also gains confidence in his army's ability to run through these countries. And so with such success 
of the Blitz in, in Western Europe as he's moving west, as we talked about before uh, with what the Blitz was, he turns his back towards Russia and starts to try to do this Blitz tactic against Russia, and it fails, and it ultimately, could, it, it ultimately loses in the war. Um, he thinks he can invade Russia and use these same tactics, and it doesn't go well. Eventually, the United States enters the war. Them and Russia basically put Germany out. So uh, keep that in mind. So there's your box. Um, I'll post these along with this video, these slides. So if you need to go back through them, uh, make sure you get your bubble filled out and that really you understand that the Blitz was a, overall a, a really fast and quick, strong military uh, tactic to quickly overtake en their enemies. And um, they, they did this because of what they learned from World War I, and they only had a certain amount of resources, and that it basically gives them a big advantage. So yeah, keep that in mind. Thanks for listening. Hope you're enjoying the snow. Do something fun, um, and be ready to finish this when we get back.